Pakistan's problems obvious. It's become the home to international Islamist militants who train and regroup in its tribal areas, so brazenly so that Washington simply doesn't believe Pakistan really wants to flush them all out. They're stuck together. America needs Pakistan to let its counter-terrorism operatives in. Pakistan needs American money. But it's a very bad marriage indeed. First, there are the drone strikes, killing senior Al Qaeda and other militants, but also allegedly civilians, sowing fear and fueling anti US fury. And then there was the case of Raymond Davis, a CIA contractor released from double murder charges in Lahore after blood money was paid. And then, of course, came the death of Osama bin Laden, America's most wanted man, found in one of Pakistan's most secure military towns. Over the years, I've repeatedly made clear that we would take action within Pakistan if we knew where bin Laden was. That is what we've done. Humiliated, Pakistan lashed out at the affront to its sovereignty. Now, the relationship's not always negative. A couple of weeks ago, a senior al-Qaeda commander was captured in Quetta by the Pakistanis, causing Washington and Islamabad to exchange a flurry of compliments, like an estranged couple at a dinner party trying to pretend that nothing was wrong. But even this respite to this rocky relationship didn't last. Just over the weekend, the recent attack on NATO in the U.S. Embassy in Kabul was blamed by senior U.S. officials on the Haqqani militant network. They repeated allegations that the Haqqanis received help from Pakistani intelligence. Another reason for distrust, but still, this old couple can't quite separate. Nick Payton Walsh, CNN, Islamabad.